All right, for tomorrow's lab, we're going to take a look at conservation of momentum. Our purpose of the lab is to, to investigate conservation of momentum. What we're going to end up doing for our lab is we are going to um, set up two pieces of track with our two cars. One car is going to be some height here that you determine yourself. We're going to send this car down the track. It will collide and stick with our second car. And then the two car system is going to travel some horizontal distance that you determine yourself. We are going to time how long it takes to go this horizontal distance. So once this car starts moving, we're going to start our time and then you stop your time once it's reached this distance that you have identified you want it to go. Um, so we're going to do this four times. The data we're going to collect is just the time it takes to go this horizontal distance using our stopwatch. This vertical height here that we'll identify as H and our distance X here, our horizontal um, distance that we want our two car system to go. So um, I, um, this is like the second time I made this video because my cat was interrupting. Uh, but as I was going through it, I realized we need uh, the mass of our cars. Okay, all right. So um, these things are we're going to measure. <laughs> and then for our times, we're going to take our four trials and find the average. So this is all the information we need for this lab. What you're going to be calculating is the velocity of car A right before it collides with car B. So car A um, started with some gravitational potential energy. It is going along the horizontal part of the track with, with just kinetic energy. And uh, you can use conservation of energy to find the velocity of the car A right before it collides with car B. Or you can use your kinematics, right? We can calculate our, <clears throat> our acceleration and our final velocity using a displacement and a time down the inclined plane. Um, it's your choice. If you're using kinematics, you have to um, collect some other pieces of data. Uh, but either way, it's fine. If you will, should get the same velocity. Uh, calculate the velocity of the car B after the collision. So once they collide and they're going to be moving together, they're going to be moving with the same velocity. But I say car B uh, because uh, this is the car we're going to use to for our, our horizontal length. Um, from the beginning of cart A, or excuse me, the beginning of cart B to the ending, the ending position of the beginning of cart B. I'll show you this tomorrow. Uh, all right, calculate the actual velocity of cart B after the collision using your distance, the horizontal distance and time we collected. So our, these two velocities should be pretty similar. All right, this is our theoretical because we're using um, calculations. This is going to be our actual because we did measure this time and, and displacement. We're going to calculate the percent error between the measured and the calculated. For the velocity of cart B, they should be close. If they're not close, I want you to tell me why, what you think, why the reason they're not close. All right, so that's it. That is the lab. The extension questions for the lab include, is this collision elastic or inelastic, and how do you know? Um, inelastic is when energy, kinetic energy is conserved, so the kinetic energy before the collision is, is equal to the kinetic energy after the collision, and inelastic is when your kinetic energy is not conserved. Um, and how do you know? So um, there's not a trick to this. You just need to plug it into your kinetic energy equation and find the kinetic energy of your two car system before and compare it with the kinetic energy of your two car system after. Uh, what is the change in momentum for cart B? Even though our momentum is conserved for the system as a whole because there's no external forces exerted on the system, but um, 
the individual cars within our system both have a change in momentum. So what is that change in momentum for car B? Is it the same as the change in momentum for car A? Um, it should be. And then lastly, we're going to create an energy time graph for the whole sequence of events. We're going to plot our gravitational potential energy and our kinetic energy for both the cars. We're going to sketch this graph. I don't expect you to find the time that it reached the bottom and the, the time that it collided. And this is just um, this is just a sketch. What should your what should your um, energies look like? So you know we want to put uh, the time when the car reaches the horizontal section. So our first car, we'll just say at this time t1, our car our car a reaches this horizontal section. So what happens to the potential energy? What happens to the kinetic energy is the car is traveling down the track. And then um, at time two, This is when the two cars collide. So now what, what is going on? Well, what is, first of all, what's going on with our energy from the time that the car A is horizontal on the track and um, car B shouldn't be on here at all because it has no energy. But at this time that they collide, car B does have an energy. So what kind of energy does it have and what does it look like compared to the type of energy from cart A. This one we're just sketching. So I'm looking for, is it a steady slope? Is it a curved slope? Is it a positive slope? Is it a negative slope? And make sure that you're writing both your potential energy and your kinetic energy on there. All right, that'll be it.